What's going on everyone and welcome to the TC Trading channel. So in today's video, we're going to be going over a Weeble desktop paper trading tutorial here. So we're going to try to make this as short and simple as possible so you can get in and get out with what you need. Now, there will be some overlap with a lot of the features and how to create customized layouts, which there are already some videos that we already have here and I actually have on my over on my personal channel. If you type in Weeble customized layout on YouTube, that video should come back up. So after this video, if you have questions upon customizations, I'll, I'll cover some things here. If you have further questions, either leave a comment or check out some other videos that we have. So right now we're on the customized uh, layout section of my Weeble layout. So I have this layout right here. And when I do more like chart analysis videos, or I just want to dive into charts. Um, so I'll use like this type of layout. And so I'll use something like this where it's a much larger chart, but for active trading, this is the layout that I personally use but we don't want to use this. We want to go into paper trading. So how do you get to paper trading? Well, on a Weeble desktop over on the left-hand side, that's where you want to be paying attention to. And so it's this right here. It's that little kind of dollar sign on top of a couple stacks of something. I guess it's money. And so you click on that, then you'll come right here to the PM section. Now you're going to have the option to choose a layout. So here we go. So right at the top, the first thing you need to make sure you always see when you're in the paper trading, I guess, side of Weeble is the PM for paper money. If you don't see a PM, that is not good. That means you're going to be on your live account. And so if you're going in with a larger size or you don't mean to do something, make sure you double check that there's a PM next to or in, in the section that you're on or on your order entry, which we'll show you guys in just a second here. Okay. So from here, we have a couple options. For the sake of this video, we're going to use one of the already uh, created layouts because I don't want to waste time uh, creating and building a layout, which could take some time. Uh, and it's really not worth it. We already have videos on how to do that. So what I want to do here is we can go to uh, some of their default layouts, which they have right here, uh, or you can create your own customized layout, which I would recommend. But you can start from a default layout and edit things to build your own layout. So I'm going to use the US stocks paper trading layout right here. And so I click on that. Now this is actually going to be set up for a different size screen. So right off the bat, my screen is pretty large. So I think it's like 27 inches. So I think that that's why it's getting kind of skewed. So you'll have to adjust this stuff, which is fine. It's not that hard to do. And we'll do some of that right here live for you. So I'll go to my watch list tab that pulls up right here. And I'll just extend this down to the bottom of the screen. I go to some of this, I'll extend some of this. Actually, I want to make sure that my order entry is a little bit smaller. I want a larger chart. So I'll extend my chart down and then I can move some of the orders. I can move some positions. I can move a bunch of this stuff over and then I can add some stuff, which I'll do really quickly. And then we'll just dive into how this stuff works. So in order to add some other additional features here, you have to go over to the add widget section up in the top, right? This little box, you go to the add widgets and then you can add what you want. So right now what we're pulling up, I want to make sure I add up the quote. So I, we have a chart. I want to get rid of that. I want to add the quote for the stock that I'm trading and whatnot. And I want to make sure that I have this set to group one. So when you have these groups right here, that means when you change something on one chart, it's going to change on all of the, the charts or all the features, the widgets that have that same group number. So I'm going to go to groups. Now it's pulled up Bitcoin. I'm going to pull up SPY, SPY, just so that we have that pulled up. And then we'll go through some examples here in just one second. So let me get rid of this chart right here. We can remove that. We have now time and sales pulled up, which is fun to watch. I love watching time and sales level two pulled up here as well. Um, you'll have to go into your week app to enable the advanced quotes section of level two. We have a video going over the Weeble app. And if you want to dive into that video towards the end, I think we talk about how to enable level two. But what's more important here is that we need to get some order entries, active trades, and some details. So what you might want to do for your paper trading account is pull up your account, like number your details of your account. So I may want to have this pulled up somewhere so I can see the fluctuations in my account, see what it's at. And I of course could reset that. So if I want to reset my account value, I go right here, I click on reset and I can change my starting balance, which I think is really helpful. So for example, we're going to use a hundred thousand dollars here. Now, of course you can change that. Like I just showed you guys how to do, but if I go back to my widgets, so if I want to go to the order entry, right? The traditional order entry is going to be this guy right here, which will show you how to put an order through on that order entry just in one second but I want to pull off some other things. So for example, active trade, this is actually really fun. I would recommend using this or at least testing this out. So I might put this right up next to my order entry and I might bring down my position. So if I have any live positions, it'll pull the positions up or show them right here on this widget. So let's move this active trade over. So it's nice and big. 
And then we can talk about that in a second, as well as the order entry. That's like the most important. And then as well as classic trade, this is this is probably what you're going to use the most. I'll tell you that right now. This is what I use mostly uh, on my normal, I guess, layout, but we'll bring this over. So let's move myself up so I guess I can be a little bit larger. And so now everything we kind of want is generally in the same spot or generally in one spot. And there's a lot more you can dive into in the widget section, but all we need for the sake of this video to d demonstrate paper trading here is done. We got it all. Now, one thing to note, again, we're on the paper trading layout, right on the left-hand side, the paper trading, uh, I guess, icon, right? When you hover over, it'll tell it. And then on the top of all your widgets, you should see a PM. The watch list is not going to show you that, but on every other widget or most other widgets, uh, other than like time and sales and some other ones in the quote, you should see a PM. Now, PM on the top right is going to just stand for paper money, and it, you know Whenever you're doing something on that widget, you're you're acting in your paper trading account. That's crucial, okay? That's very crucial that you make sure you see that designation. And then as well, make sure that when you have your order entries, your active trades, or even let's say your classic trade widgets, make sure you set these groups all to be the same so that when you're looking at a stock, for example, if I change the stock I'm looking at, let's say I go to like Apple. If I go to like Apple stock right here, on my chart, it's going to change Apple across all the widgets. So if I just was watching Apple stock right now, I refer back to my classic trade widget right here and I put an order in, I need to make sure that that is connected with Apple. And so if I don't have these um, these groups set, it's not going to be connected with Apple. So I have to make sure I, I change that. So, okay. So here we go. The basics are covered. We have our layout. We know what we're doing. Let's make some orders. Let's put some orders in. Let's test some things out so we can see how this works in real time live. The market's open, so we're going to be diving right on through. So first, I'm going to go with the classic trade option. Uh, I would highly recommend you use this feature. Um, the in, in, in past updated versions, this is like the most update version we have right now. In past versions, you would we would have to use the order entry form or the active trade, which is kind of a pain. I almost always use the classic trade feature right here when I'm trading live, but in paper trading, I would recommend you, you start with this, okay? So what I wanna do, number one here, is I have options. I have two different types of options for my orders, and there will be a video, if not out already, on this channel going over the different order type options on Webull, stop losses, limit buys, market buys, all that type of stuff. There'll be a specific video coming very soon, or if not, it's already out. So. Really quick, we go into the limit order section. We can identify how many shares we wanna buy and then identify our price. Now, limit order versus market order. Limit order, you're setting the price you want or better. Market order is gonna fill you right now. So for the sake of this video, let's just use a market order so that we get filled right away and we can show you guys live how this works. Now, when we go into this, right, I wanna buy 10 shares of Apple, for example. I'm gonna buy 10 shares of Apple right now. Apple, if we're looking at the chart, I'm looking at Apple right now and I'm saying, hey, it's, you know, honestly, if we just dive into this, if I draw in some features for us here live, which is kind of fun, uh, we can see Apple's at a support. Apple's roughly at a support level right now. So I kind of like where Apple's setting up. I'm gonna buy 10 shares right now. So I'm gonna click simulated buy with Apple. It's gonna say submitted success with the top. We have a working order right now. It's gonna show up under the orders tab right here, the order widget, which you may or may not wanna leave on your layout. It's up to you. And it says it's working. It may take a couple seconds to fill. Boom, now it's filled. Okay, now I go to the filled section. Our Apple order is filled. Now it'll show up on our positions widget right here. So we can see right now that we have our Apple shares. We have 10 shares of quantity at a market value of $1,249.80. And if we scroll over, it gives the last price and our average price. So currently we're up like two cents off our average price, which is awesome. And if we scroll back to the left, it'll tell us our unrealized PL and our unrealized PL percentage. So there you go. Now we have a position on for Apple. But while we're at it, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some more orders through the other methods so you guys can see this live, how this works. I would personally, it's up to your preference, your personal preference. My preference is using the classic trade widget. It's the easiest one to use. Okay, so now what we want to do here is let's use the order entry down the bottom. So I would click on new order on the bottom and it's gonna give me this order entry form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing I just did, except do it on this form. So I have a going with a single order right here. Apple was the ticker symbol, so I make sure my symbol is set. I'm looking to buy the stock, 10 more shares at a market order, time enforces day, extended hours, no, because we're during normal market hours. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna click on place simulated order. Now, these take a second to fill. 
on the paper trading side, I will say that really quick, that these take a little bit longer to fill than obviously your live account. Your live account will get filled right away. These take, uh, they, I do have, I have noticed they take a little bit longer, a couple seconds to fill. Now these are filled, great. So now we have, which our position is now 10 or 20 shares of Apple right here as we speak. And it's currently giving me my average price, last price, things like that. So that's great. Okay, cool. Now let's use the active trade. So if I wanna use the active trade, this is actually really cool because it's gonna do essentially what I had to click on the market, enter my share count, my ticker symbol. It's gonna do it all in just one click. I don't have to do anything, right? So I can buy a hundred shares of Apple at the market right now. I can buy a hundred shares at the bid. Now we have our bid and our ask up here. So our bid, this is our bid price, this is our ask. It'll just put it at the bid, put the order at the bid. And if it fills, it fills. Or if Apple just runs up the second I click that button, it may never actually fill. That's the, the risk, I guess, in, to a degree with using the bid or the ask. Um, and then I can sell Apple at the ask or sell a market order. So it's really cool. And what we can talk more about that in that we will order types of video if you're confused on what a market order versus a limit order is. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we can enter in our shares right here. And what we can do is we can have preset settings on this, on how many shares I want to buy. For the sake of this, let's just do 10. So I have 10 and now I can put my orders in. So just with one click, I can click on buy market 10 shares of Apple right now. So just like that, it's submitted. We watch our order section, make sure we get a fill, give it two seconds here, and we should see a fill pop on up. Once that does, we'll then have 30 shares of Apple. There it is. Now we have 30 shares of Apple. Here's our position section right here. 30 shares, we have a market value of $3,700. We go across the side, gives us our average price. Uh, last price right here and how much we're up. We're up 65 cents, guys, just like that. And as we speak, right, this actually is like a pretty decent trade opportunity because Apple's at a relatively, you know, low area for the day. Sitting at support, I would say Apple probably makes a nice little rebound. And what we can do now is we can go to seller Apple. So what I'm going to do, that shows you guys how to do it with the order entry, the active trade, and then the, um, the classic trade form. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to use the classic trade to sell. So I have 30 shares and I don't have to sell all my shares at once. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to sell my 30 shares. I'm just going to sell it all at once for the sake of this video. And we can see that if I look at the bid and the ask, Apple's sitting here between 124.99, 125. I'm going to sell it at 125. So I'm going to set a limit order here and I'm going to set my order for 125 on Apple. And I'm going to click on set that sell. So we're going to wait on that one to get filled. Once it does, it may not. We'll have to, we'll have to wait a second here. But Right now, the bid and the ask is 97 or 124.96 by 124.97. So I'm about three cents off from getting filled. And we'll have to watch here if that gets filled, I'll get taken out and we'll, we'll reassess from there. Just like that, boom, we're filled. So there's Apple getting filled. It just came up 30 shares at a 125 average. So you guys can notice that really quick. On all of these buys, we had a 124.98, 124.97, and a 124.99. All of those buys were less than where I sold at, so that was a profitable trade. If we take a look at our account, our account value is now at $100,000.65. So we made 65 cents on that trade. Now it's really, this is actually really fun if you guys are looking to dive into more active trading or really get into this stuff. The paper trading platform has been updated substantially over the past couple of months since using Webull. So this is the most up-to-date video right now when it comes to how to paper trade stocks on Webull. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you give it a shot. One other quick thing to note, you do not have the ability to paper trade options on the current update that we have right now. I believe that is coming from what I've heard from Webull specifically but that is one of the bigger drawdowns and why some people get upset, but you can't trade options as of right now. So what you could do is just up your account size and just trade shares, get a feel for the price action, get a feel for how stocks move, try your trading. Then it's going to make it so much easier when you go to a live account with your actual money in it, it's going to make it so much easier because you've already done this. You've already used the order entry. You've already used the active trade. You know how this stuff works. You've been watching time and sales. You've been watching the charts. You got a good feel for how things work. And so you can use that to your advantage when you go over to your live account. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that makes some sense. If you guys got some value out of this video, consider subscribing to the channel hit that thumbs up button. We're doing tutorial style videos here. So if you guys have more questions, there's probably some more videos that may help answer those questions. Check out some other videos, check out our Webull playlist. And of course, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.